A few months ago I applied to get into the Palia closed beta and I received an invite to join. It was a game that I heard of through a few friends, and the mix of graphics, comfy gameplay, and charm drew me in. Having played similar games like Stardew Valley and Sunhaven, I knew I was in for a treat. This is my 10 hour journey through Palia. Our story begins with an omnipotent voice and the cultivating of a sense of self, otherwise known as character creation. For me, there's only one selection that matters. Hair. More specifically, curly hair. Afterwards, I quickly pick my outfit, name, and then begin my resurrection. An old but alive ruin greets us with a marvelous statue of a bird, quickly followed by a few new characters. One some kind of archaeologist, and the other a metal golem. Through mere chance, a stone is activated, shooting forth light. Our birth is a glorious purple. We open our eyes and are greeted by Gina, our first of many friends. She informs us that many humans are resurrecting around Palia, but no one's sure why. We're given a map and told to meet Ashura, the innkeeper in town. Before that, I changed some game settings and had a quick chat with Hecla, Gina's protector. After a few movement tutorials introducing jumping and climbing, we get our first real look at our new home. We regain control and start making our way into town. On our way, we stumble upon a house and we quickly find a new villager, Shane. He informs us that he is the residential sage. Our friendship increases from this exchange and he confirms that we should keep following the road. I take a quick detour from the main road and meet another new villager, Eloisa. She feels empathy for the human situation and our friendship increases. We repeat these introductions with each new person we come across. On the outskirts of town we meet Tish, who just moved into town. Neo is next, his family runs the local farm and he gives us a carrot to feed Sugarfoot, who I never found. At this point I should point out that this game is completely online, and that we will see other people playing the game and can work together with them whether we're mining, hunting, or resource trading. Following the markings on our map, we meet a cat-like creature called Zeki, the general shop owner. Kenyatta is next, she's the mayor's rebellious daughter and close to her is Sifu, the town blacksmith, who is also a retired monster slayer turned caring mother. Next stop is the inn. We meet Reth the cook, Kenley the mayor, and Ashura the innkeeper. He offers us a plot in the outskirts of town and gives us our first tool, the axe. With the axe in hand, we make our way to the plot to meet the town miner for a pickaxe and to get started on our new home. As we enter our plot for the first time, we're introduced to an overgrown and broken down section of the world, filled with strange animals and someone who is busy at work. The rock is split and we're introduced to our resident miner, enter Hodari. He informs us many new humans are looking for land and gives us a pickaxe and a mushroom to eat. We're introduced to the tool wheel and prompted to clear some of our new land. I get to work breaking down stone dilapidated structures, and a small shrub. We receive materials and an ancient thing. I didn't want to leave anything undone and began clearing most of the plot. I gathered plenty of resources and received my first accomplishment, which came with a bit of renown. This will be of use to us later. There are plenty of accomplishments to get. We have our work cut out for us. As I kept clearing, I received my first level in foraging. After binge cleaning, I returned to Hodari. He gave me a workbench and I was introduced to the placement system. I built a storage bin and a makeshift tent. I picked out a good spot for the chest, placed a few things inside, and then placed my temporary home. It wasn't much, but it would work for the time being. Having completed our quest, we're prompted to speak to Ani, who tells us he was sent by his mother, Delayla. He relays to us that he's in charge of deliveries twice daily. We receive our first piece of mail, a stick of butter. Additionally, there's mail for us in our mailbox, an old fishing rod from Anar, and a makeshift bow, arrows, and a recipe to make our own arrows from Hassan. I returned to Ani and told him about the ancient thing. He says Gina might know more about it. He suddenly remembers to give us our bug scouts belt and some smoke bombs. Lastly, we're told to speak to Ani's dad, Badru. 
He'll teach us how to grow food, and Reth will teach us how to cook it. With our new tools in hand, we head back towards town and introduce ourselves to Kaleri, the town's librarian. She doesn't trust us with her books quite yet, but she will. Next, we follow up with Ani about our new bug catching gear. He makes us promise to honor nature and most importantly, to show him if we find anything really cool. We're officially in the Bug Scouts. Our first mission, collect a common blue butterfly or a night moth. First, we're headed to Reth to learn how to cook. He says we should start simple by building a campfire and grilling some mushrooms. In passing, he mentions that if we'd like to get an actual home, we should talk to Mayor Kenley. Next, we head to Ashura, who assures us we're doing a great job integrating. He offers us multiple recipes, but two catch my eye. The sawmill to make planks, and recipes for improved axes. We'll come back with some money later. On my way to Baju, I test the waters. It doesn't go so well. After drying off, we catch our first bug, a blue butterfly. We caught a few more for good measure before talking with Baju. He makes a few puns about vegetables and promises to meet us at our plot. Before we part ways, he tells us we're ready to talk to Kenley about getting a house. We spot our first animal on the way back, but I guess I forgot I had a bow. Moving on to Kenley is our next objective. He's lost the forms for housing, so in the meantime he points us towards Tish, who happens to be the town carpenter. I quickly compliment Kenley's mayoral skills, and luck is on our side. Tish is walking close by. She gives us recipes for furniture, torches, and a wardrobe to change our outfit. Turning in our quest to Ani rewards us with some milk and renown. I try out my bow to moderate success, and pick my first sundrop lily. Hassan is close by, so we introduce ourselves. He warns us to be good to nature and gives us a quest to hunt one of two animals. There's plenty in the area, I pick my target and my shot rings true. Our first hunt. I turn the quest in and receive some grilled meat. Heading to Gina, I stumbled on a fast travel board which I immediately forgot about. At last we reach Gina and tell her about the strange artifact. She informs us that it's a power source that was once used by ancient humans. Gina needs time to study the artifact and will send us a letter when she's done. Back at the plot, we're greeted by Badru. He gives us some soil and a makeshift hoe. I place them side by side in a corner close to a source of water and put our new tool to work preparing the soil, finding some old junk as we went. After readying the soil, we head back to Badru. He continues our gardening journey by giving us carrot seeds, onion seeds, and a watering can. This is the first time I run into the full inventory mechanic. I quickly sort that out and get to planting. We start with the onions and move on to the carrots. With a clean pond close by, we fill our watering can and begin watering our crops. We'll give them some time to grow. Afterwards, I noticed we had some mail. Sifu gives us a chopper rug, Ani sent a picnic set, and Ashura reminds us that we're good enough at foraging now by the sawmill recipe. Using the recipes I received from Tish, I crafted a dining chair and was prompted to learn something new. I chose the wall torch. Next, I built the dining table. I learned the sideboard recipe, and lastly, we built the wardrobe. I chose to learn how to make a bed, which I didn't have the materials to make quite yet. I placed the new furniture in our temporary home, then put our picnic basket outside. While I waited for the crops to grow, I spoke to Kenley, who was visiting our plot. The house blueprint had been found. I emptied the tent, removed it, and decided on a good place to drop the house frame. We would need to get some sapwood planks and stone bricks to complete the construction. Working with what we had, I built a campfire to grill up some mushrooms for Reth's quest. This is when I discovered focus. When you eat food, you gain focus. Focus is then used through any action, granting bonus experience towards that particular skill. My quest required me to use all 50 of the focus. We chopped and smashed on the outskirts of our plot, getting an accomplishment for mining, followed by my first level up in mining. I cooked up a few mushrooms I found and built a second chest for more combined storage. Tish was visiting our plot. She told us that we would need to talk to Ashura and Hodari to begin crafting the materials for our home. Knowing I would need some gold for the recipes, I took what I had worth selling and headed back towards the valley. I did some gathering on the way and went inside the general store where I earned my first pieces of gold. I had enough for both recipes. I bought the sawmill recipe from Ashura then checked the map to find Hodari. 
who I couldn't see anywhere. I did see Anar and decided to head to them next. I quickly found that there was more than one golem in Palia. He mentioned his purpose in life was fishing and gave us a quest to put our fishing rod to use. I caught my first fish off the dock, then turned in the quest to Anar, who rewarded us with some grilled fish. Still not seeing Hodari, I did some bug catching and gathering in the nearby area, remembering to eat food and keep my focus up. I sold what I had and bought some wheat seeds to fill out the garden at home. This is when I spotted the backpack. We needed this. For now we headed home, collecting some mushrooms, cooking them, and planting our wheat seeds, watering them right after. I checked the mailbox and we received a few letters from Gina. She mentioned a phoenix statue and gave us our ancient battery back, telling us of a spot where it may be of use. At this point, I had run out of the smoke bombs Ani had given us, and with no clay to make our own, I discovered requests. Requests are a way to ask help from other players in the game. For the time being, I requested some clay because I was unsure of where to get it. I built a third chest, and with our new recipe, we built the basic sawmill and began producing sapwood planks. While the sawmill was working, I collected more sapwood and plant fiber, getting to level 3 foraging in the process. We collected our first plank, which completed our quest. I noticed we had some more mail waiting for us. Ashura reimbursed us for our sawmill purchase. Zeki sent a lucky coin, telling us to spend it in his store. And lastly, Anar sent an old booty he had caught. I placed it immediately. Afterwards, I discovered the sales bin, which would allow me to sell items twice a day without going to Zeki's shop. Before moving on, I was exploring the menus and found two messages from the developers, Singularity 6. As a founder, I received a small windmill. I was also referred to the game by a friend and received a fruit basket. I placed both close to my home. My vegetables were ready to be watered, so I did that and headed back into the valley. Inside the valley, our first objective is to learn the recipe for the basic smelter, which we need to complete our home. I hunt my first Cernuk, which are noticeably tougher than Chapa's. We head to Zeki's to spend our lucky coin. This lucky box contained five tomato seeds. Reth is close, so we hand in the quest for grilling mushrooms and receive some vegetable soup and renown. I make my way to Ashura, who now offers us the recipe to make a copper axe, but we don't have the gold for it at the moment. Gina is next, and she informs us that after replacing a piece of the phoenix statue where we were born, the statue began to glow. We're suggested to investigate. Heading in that direction, we find our first copper node, and with it, a large shiny pebble. Before investigating the phoenix statue, I decided to see what was behind the ancient door. I placed the battery and entered the ruin. I was greeted with a beautiful cavern filled with vegetation and flowing water. In the middle of the room, there's a bowl with rust at the bottom. Further in is a locked door with an inscription. Strange writing says, Knowledge grows the mind even in times of strife. To enter here, you must apply that which grows the light. Water. Which was correct. First, I tried to water the door, completely forgetting the bowl behind me. Eventually, I put two and two together and began filling the device. The door opened and we received a lovely amount of renown. Through the door lay a huge structure, obstructed by a steep cliff. I returned to Gina and she suggested getting a glider from Najuma to continue through the ruin. Exiting the ruin, we returned to where we began our journey. Prompted to commune with the Phoenix statue, our focus bonus experience rate is increased to 25%. This is where Renown comes into play. For each preceding communion, we must pay 100 Renown. Knowing that, we increase our focus bonus an additional 5%, leaving us with 70 Renown. As I was heading back to the plot, I spotted something behind a waterfall. It turned out to be an old pirate's treasure chest. When we returned home, we had mail from Reth who gave us recipes for more grilled foods. I grilled some fish, then collected the clay I had requested. I used the clay to craft smoke bombs. I also made some more arrows since I had been using them a lot while traveling place to place. I built the basic smelter, placed it, and began construction of the stone bricks we would need for our house. Kenley dropped in and told us that it's custom for those who move into the valley to give gifts to their new neighbors. We're tasked with gifting five residents. I put the last of the wood into the sawmill and collected the first of our stone bricks. Heading towards Bahari Bay, I got my first level in hunting. Once I entered, I checked the map. Oh, it's big. I struck out to find Najuma, who I found out was Hodari's daughter. She agrees to build us a glider, but first we must secure some resources. I got to level 2 in bug catching and discovered my second treasure chest. Back in the valley, I mined my first silver ore, then emptied out my inventory. 
Watching this footage back, I noticed that I had put leather pieces into the shipping bin, but never took them out. I placed the last of the sapwood planks we needed into the construction zone, watered the crops, and threw what I didn't need into the shipping bin. We hunt and gather our way back to the village where Ani is. With level 2 bug catching, we are able to buy the recipe for sneaky smoke bombs. While I was with Ani, I handed out my first gift. I happened to wander into the furniture store in town. They had a few key items for sale that would come in handy later. I gave Ashura some grilled mushrooms, then I gifted Reth some grilled fish. Entering the clothing store for the first time, we introduced ourselves to Jell. I didn't mess with any of the clothing at the moment, but instead gave Jell some chapa fur, which he accepted. Outside the village, I spoke with Hassan, who now offered the recipe for copper arrows. I held off on the purchase for now and gifted him some of our own arrows. Our quest was completed, so I spoke with Kenley and received 15 renown and a grilled oyster. Buying from Hodari, we purchased the recipe to make copper bars and ceramic. Next, I gifted Sifu some copper ore, then headed to Reth who was looking for new recipes, but he's been banned from borrowing books. We also picked up a quest to talk to Hassan for Sifu. Before continuing, I had sold our extra materials. This was enough to get the backpack from Zeki Shah. The next upgrade would cost us 5,000. For now, there would be less trips back home. I got the cookbook for Reth who gave us some soup, then had our introductions with Delayla. We spoke with Hassan and relayed the information to Sifu. She was more than grateful, giving us four steak dinners. At the plot, we received mail from Shane, who let us know that we had met all the villagers save for one, the dragon. We were reimbursed by Hodari for our smelter purchase. I made some smoke bombs, cooked some of our food, then checked in on our crops. The carrots were fully grown and the rest were in need of watering. I had some room, so I planted the tomato seeds we had received from our lucky box. I reached level 2 in cooking, then crafted a second sawmill. Inside the valley, I headed to meet the last resident, the dragon. To my surprise, I was greeted by another statue that I could commune with. This one expanded the amount of focus I could have at any given moment. I did some group hunting in the night with another pallion, getting level 3 hunting in the process, then decided it was worth it to increase my maximum focus to 300. I still had renown, so I made the trip to the phoenix statue. There was a chest at the base containing a wallpaper. I communed, increasing my bonus experience to 35%. At the plot, I put what I had in the shipping bin and built a second smelter. I placed both the new smelter and the sawmill. The stone brick was finished, so I added it to our home. Our house would be complete in 8 hours. We had mail from different villagers, letting us know that with our skill upgrades came more recipes to buy. I gathered some wooden stone from nearby getting to level 3 mining. I used the materials to craft a second campfire, cooking on it immediately. We're making good progress, but there's still lots to do and learn. We log back in the next day and our house is complete, unlocking the city hall store. Tish is there to congratulate us and gives us a new wallpaper and floor. She mentions that we should talk with Kenyatta who will tell us more. I place both the new walls and floor inside our new home and it's already looking great. We tried some other wallpapers and the treasure chest we had been finding. For the time being I placed the usable chest inside which linked with our outer storage. I then picked out spots for our table, chair and wardrobe. Jell was visiting and asked us to try something from our wardrobe. I liked my look so I put some glasses on and then took them off. The quest continued prompting us to check out the clothing store. Our wheat and onions were ready so I harvested them getting to level 2 farming. I watered the tomato plants and put the copper into the smelter to be turned into copper bars. I noticed I had found some gold quality seeds while harvesting my crops and I planted those. I was heading to Hodari next and I was surprised to find out that he could walk extremely fast. No way, it teleported him so far away! Once I reached Hodari, I purchased the copper pickaxe recipe and iron bar recipe. The axe would do more damage than my current pickaxe. There was a mine close by, but it seemed to be barren at the moment. Next I checked out Hassan's store. He had the recipe for stronger arrows and a new bow that could shoot further than my makeshift bow. I decided to save my money and instead put it towards the copper axe recipe. I stopped into the general store and sold a few things and used the gold to buy the next upgrade for my bow. Kenyatta was in town so I spoke with her. She told us we could now buy new rooms for our home as well as permits for expanding our plot. She also mentioned we could get crafting extensions to increase our cap on machines. Before we left she told us we were eligible to become full Kilma citizens. To do this our plot would have to be valued at 25,000 gold. We headed to Reth next who I found out lived under the inn. He now gave us access to some free recipes. One for a standard stove and the second for a prep station. 
These came with their own quests to try them out. I was going to see Badru when I ran into a funny little fellow and another hidden treasure chest. We checked out Badru's store which had some interesting things for sale and received the wheat seed for completing our quest. The clothing store was next on our quest list. There were lots of good outfits for a small real life bee. We might have to take a closer look another time. I finished Jell's quest and he gave us some fabric. He mentioned he needed some dye and we were called on to find 5 shells for him. Did we ever find these? No. Interested in finding out what was for sale at the town hall, we headed there next. There were writs we could buy for a noun, as well as crafting licenses, rooms, and other luxuries for our dwelling. We bought two writs and headed home. I placed all the vegetables we had grown into the shipping bin. Some of our copper was ready, but looking at the recipes, we needed more sapwood planks. Around the plot, we cleared a few trees to gather the sapwood we needed, then put them in the sawmill. I was delighted with the sale of our first harvest and had more money than I could think what to do with. I put my writs to use and expanded our space by two on the right side, where I wanted our crops to grow. Knowing we would need more planks to continue upgrading our tools, I spent a little bit of time gathering sapwood, then put it into production. Badru generously sent us a pantry in the mail for our farm. I wanted to get the materials for the glider, so I went to the furniture store and bought the leather and fabric I needed. The general store was next door, and I purchased some seeds to keep our crops going. I was on a mission to find gel shells on the way to an area I hadn't explored yet. I passed Badru, who I bought a patch of soil from. While searching for shells, I reached level 3 in bug catching. Then I found a strange statue that prompted me to light some incense. I'm not sure what this did. During my excursion, I found my first carpet moss in a valley filled with things to hunt, gather, and catch. I reached level 4 foraging and found my first note of clay. I traveled back to the plot where I dropped a few things into the shipping bin and placed our third plot of soil. I gathered up the sapwood planks, copper bars, and grilled the meat I had hunted. After clearing out the farm's first weeds, we planted the seeds we had bought from Badru. I prepared the new soil and watered all the crops. The materials were finally ready to craft our first upgraded tool, the copper axe. This also introduced repair kits. I immediately upgraded my pickaxe. Testing out my new axe, I found I was able to take down bigger trees, rewarding me with more sapwood. I put more planks in the sawmills, then grabbed everything we needed to give Najuma for our glider. We traded our materials and received our glider, plus some oysters, but that's not important. We had to try it immediately. Glider unlocked. Let's go. Noticing Hassan was close, we picked up the recipe for copper arrows. I took a look at the map and noticed there was a beach on this part of the map. I was still looking for shells. I didn't find them, but I saw some new animals I could catch, like crabs and a glowing bug. But I was on a mission to find shells. We found a dock and fished our first fishing spot, getting a gold Bahari bass, followed by our first iron node. This area seemed to have the next tier of materials we needed. I ran into a choppa that knew Shadow Clone Jutsu, but decided he was too powerful. I sold a few items, then opened the oysters we had received, and I found a pearl, which I sold for a nice 70 gold. With the glider in hand, we made our way back to the ancient ruin. We re-enter the structure ready to learn about what happened to the humans of Palia. Gina is waiting for us and points us towards a glowing object in the distance. We open our wings and fly. First we try a door on the right with the word storage on it, but it's locked us. Opposite from that is a library with another locked door. We head up some stairs finding a portion of the wall resembling a wave. It hints at there being more. Close by is a hidden chest with some gold and some silver ore. I found a second hidden chest filled with mushrooms. We stumble upon an ancient tome which hints to a forgotten struggle and love, signed Alba. There's another tome describing a situation of fear and starvation amongst a trapped group of humans. A geyser leads us to the upper portion of the structure, we explore and get stuck. I found my way out and was surprised to find another hidden chest with some plants. There was a shiny pebble laying about which we picked up. Towards the top of the ruin there's a note describing a Valeri Vidius who is guarding a puzzle. This puzzle was... Not the hardest I've ever done. Okay, that was easy. We tell Gina that someone was trapped in the ruin and she confirms this. It was for their protection, but from what? She believes the puzzle may be connected with another structure across the river from her tent. We should check it out. We also had our first relationship change, becoming curious colleagues with Gina. I headed home and placed a few things in the shipping bin and stored the loot I had gathered. We got the campfires cooking and checked out all the mail we had received. Ashura sent us some planks and let us know we were skilled enough to learn the recipe for heartwood planks. Najuma sent us a couple corals and Ani mentioned a better bug catching belt. Lastly, we received a lucky coin from Zeki. 
At this point we had a surplus of sapwood planks, we used some of them to upgrade to the standard bow. We used some of the copper left over and made our first standard arrows. These would be great against Cernux, who up to this point took two arrows. I made some repair kits knowing they would come in handy and stored them away, watering the crops before we left for the valley. We made a trip to Ani and bought the standard belt recipe and sneaky bombs recipe. Continuing the main quest, we headed to Gina and the structure she mentioned. Gina is there and tells us we should interact with the small pillar that is lit up. We now have bundles. This one seemed to be a fishing bundle. This is something I'd have to work on later. For our cooking quest, we bought the vegetable soup recipe from Reth. Then, we spent our lucky coin and got 5 sticks of butter. Back at home, I discovered we needed ceramic and stone bricks to craft the prep station and stove. I put both the craft in the smelters, but we would need more clay. While those got to work, we watered the crops and crafted a large torch, learning a wall decor recipe from the experience. I kept crafting and learned another wall decor as well as a wall cabinet. Inside, I placed the stool beside our wardrobe and the torches on the wall as well as our standing torches outside. All this raised our plot's value. Back in the valley, we got to level 4 hunting, and as we continued farming resources, we found a second statue with incense to light. I communed with the dragon and raised our max focus to 350. At Hassan's shop, we spent a massive 500 gold on the slowdown arrow recipe. I had more renown left and spent it at the phoenix statue, pushing our bonus experience gain to 40%. I was doing some gathering and found a sewer entrance I hadn't seen before. Inside was a store register we couldn't use yet, and a secret entrance to Zeki's shop. We hit level 5 foraging, then level 4 mining shortly after. I stopped at Zeki's and sold a solid amount of items. Gina was in town and mentioned she needed a lost key to open another ruined door. She asked us to look inside some rocks to see if we could find it. We put away the rest of our loot, including a red pebble. We were starting to get a collection of these, but at this point, I didn't have a use for them. I put the copper and clay we gathered to smelt and check the mail. We got a few letters in regards to our recent levels, unlocking better recipes. We were hunting so much game, we had to make a third campfire to keep up. This led us to level 3 cooking. Our first round of tomatoes were ready, and for now we put them away. We checked out the price for hardwood planks and a faster sawmill at Ashura's shop. I stopped down for a moment and enjoyed fishing off the dock. We hit level 2, getting a bonus for being in proximity with another player. We reeled in our first waterlogged chest, and inside was a garden choppa decoration. We kept going till we hit level 3 fishing and picked up the recipe for a health boosting hook, plus the standard fishing rod recipe, which would be faster than our current setup. We swung back to the inn and grabbed the mixing station and ramen recipes. I was milling about, and this is when I found out Anar lived in a cave. I found a great spot filled with Cernux, and while there, we hit level 5 hunting. We checked out the new items at Hodari's shop, which were a little too expensive for us at the moment. With our wallet being a little thin, we couldn't get the iron arrows quite yet either. I sold a few items to fill our pockets and went home to place our garden choppa. Our plot was now valued over 25000 which drew Eshi in to visit. She says we have a nice home, but we must still prove ourselves as being a worthy citizen. First, we must learn about the past from Gina. Second, we need a skill at level 5, which we've already done. Lastly, we need to fulfill 5 player requests, as well as 5 weekly villager item requests. We'll have to get to work on those. A bunch of crops are ready for harvest, and we water what's left, then cook the fish we had caught. Everything was finally ready to make the prep station and stove. I placed both, and cooked up our first real meal, a hearty vegetable soup. We started by chopping up some mushrooms, which was more difficult than it seemed, but we got the hang of it and prevailed. We added the mushrooms to the pot, and stirred the dish. It was as easy as that. I made two regular soups on my first attempt, and three gold quality soups from the second. These gave us three times the focus that our campfire food gave us. We'll be hungry no more. We come back to harvestable tomatoes and onions, getting us to level 3 gardening. At Zeki's, we sell off the vegetables, receiving a nice sum of gold, reinvesting our gold into more tomato seeds. I headed back to the plot and got the soil planted and watered. With that done, we requested a few different items from other Pallians. Then, I headed to Gina to learn about the past. She mentions a fear of repeating the past and a ban on the use of flow. There's a ceremonial ruin in Bahari Bay. She says we should check it out. Near Gina, we harvested our first spice sprouts from a tree. We ran into Baudru, letting him know our gardening was going well. While we were there, we got the recipe for the seed collector. After chatting with him, we headed towards town and spoke with Eshi. We told her we had found our purpose, completing the second part of our three-part quest. We handed in our quest to Reth and began asking what the villagers wanted for their weekly gifts. 
While making the rounds, we picked up a quest from Kenley to find his missing sandwich. He said he lost it somewhere in the shade surrounded by flowers. We headed back to the plot and upgraded to the standard rod while also crafting a health boosting hook we could equip. I checked the mailbox to find we had received a ton of mail. Sifu sent us some stone brick and Hassan gave us some chapa fur. Reth gave us a wonderful piece of furniture we could hang on our wall. Baudru had an upgrade for our watering can available and Zeki was generous enough to send us a lucky coin. We claimed some of our requests and filled out our very first request for another player. I hung the wall decoration from Reth and then grabbed all the items I needed for the 5 villager weekly requests. Butter was in high demand on the request board which meant we finished gifting the 5 players we needed to. While I waited for the villagers to wake up, I began looking for the ruins in Bahari Bay. We found a shiny pebble on the way, then looked upon a statue standing as a thank you and a remembrance of the collapse of humans, a lesson that today is in the hearts of the people. While heading back, I found an ancient treasure chest filled to the brim with heartwood. As day broke, we spent our lucky coin and received some fireworks. Since the villagers were awake, we began giving out weekly wants. First, we gave Tish a sun drop lily, and Ashi got some chop of her. Next was Bajru, who wanted a tomato. While there, we also bought the standard watering can recipe. In between giving gifts, I remembered to buy a few extra pieces of leather so we could upgrade our bug catching belt. Up next was Hassan, who had asked for some leather. And last was Shane, who I gifted a carrot seed. With that, we had proven our generosity. We had one thing left to do, which was prove our devotion by speaking to Gina about the relic we had seen. I had to upgrade my bug catching belt first though, which would have a higher chance of stunning the bugs we had been catching. We had enough resources left over to upgrade our watering can as well. We put it to use immediately and can now water multiple tiles at the same time. In the valley, we visited the phoenix statue to increase our bonus experience. Then on our way towards Gina, we had our first tool downgrade from overuse. We would have to fix it. We got distracted reaching level 4 bug catching in the process. Then I got a surprise when I caught my very first rare bug. A princess ladybug which sold for 145 gold. I went back out to gather through the night and reached level 6 hunting. I accidentally downgraded our bow while not paying attention, but kept hunting, receiving an accomplishment for hunting 200 creatures. We sold off the loot, which got us halfway towards the next backpack upgrade. At the plot, Baudru said we were a good bean and gifted us a variety of plants, and Tish gave us a new vase. It looked wonderful on our table. We were low on food, so I cooked up a massive amount of soups using the vegetables we had put away. We got to level 4 cooking and made a total of 24 soups. That would be a lot of focus. I re-upgraded our bow, then our pickaxe, to their standard forms. I had used a lot of arrows hunting and was making more, but I was low on sapwood. I had used all we had. I took to the wilds of the plot and began gathering sapwood to put to work. We got our first acorn and samora seed. Afterwards, I put our first iron ore to smelt and resupplied our arrows. I didn't want our tools breaking again, so we went to Hodari and bought the repair station recipe. And while we were there, we got the silver bar recipe as well. The backpack upgrade would have to wait for now. I finally made the journey out to see Gina, and we discussed the statue's message and the danger of flow. I didn't only have to learn about the past, but I had to learn about the present as well. We stopped at the inn to get the standard stove recipe, which would allow us to cook more recipes. We also got the recipe for steak dinners. For Hassan to teach us about the present, we must first pass his test, to plant 5 wild trees on our plot. Becoming a full citizen of Kilma would have to wait till next time, our 10 hours were running out. I quickly sold what we had been storing away, and we were so close to the next backpack upgrade, but like Cinderella at midnight, our time was up. It's so easy to lose yourself and get lost in the living world of Palia, going from one adventure to the next, and getting to know and bond with the people of Kilma. We had seen so much this game had to offer, and came so far from where we began. I have so many things left to do, learning the truth about flow and humans, constructing my perfect home, understanding more about these unique characters, and building a fortune among other things. I genuinely want to thank every single one of you who have watched this video. It was an extreme labor of love, taking over 50 hours of work between playing and editing. If you want to see 20 hours of Palia, let me know in the comments below.